Heavenly Father, thank you for the message of that song. Will there be any stars in my ground? So, Father, be with us this morning as we come together in your table to share the bread of life. They are to be understood, to be understand in the spiritual sense, to be applied in our daily lives. But, Lord, Again, our thoughts is not your thoughts and our way is not your way. So in this very hour of this divine worship, we would like to connect ourselves through the power of the Holy Spirit in your strength and in your victory. We had nothing to bring. We have nothing to offer but we bring to you our body, our soul, our mind today. Help us to be lost in the wonder of your great love and in the plan of your salvation as we study the seventh church, the church of Laodicea in this morning. Forgive us from all our sins. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 3. I would like to begin by reading the, the church of Laodicea and then we will go through each of them. Revelation chapter 3 in verse 14. I think my version is King James. Revelation chapter 3 in verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith they, Amen. This is the name of Jesus. The faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. In verse 15, I know thy works, Thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. Some other verses may be, may be saying, I would prefer you to be either cold or hot. In verse 16, So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. In verse 17. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched. And miserable and poor and blind and naked. In verse 18, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Verse 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. In verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. 
verse 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my father in his throne. In verse 22, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. This is the culminating event of God's mingling, sticking his nose, engaging into the events of his church. It begins in the church of Ephesus, as we study in the book of Acts. The first disciples begins God's church. However, it's not a new church. It is the same as the Old Testament church. It is portrayed in Revelation chapter 12, the woman clothed with the sun and the moon. The seven churches are a set of events. I don't, like, I don't like to use the word dispensation, but I like to say that from Ephesus to Sardis to Pergamum to Smyrna down to Philadelphia and Laodicea, it is the event of God's church in this planet when his disciples receive the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2. The seven churches are the events of the years of his church prior to his second coming. And in every church, God identified something with them, some commendations, some that God knows what they were doing. But in this Laodicean church, something unique and something unusual. Because this Laodicean church, God described describe the character of the people, the attitude of the people, prior to his soon coming. In fact, in verse 14, that Jesus proclaimed himself as the Amen, and I am the I am the person that knows this church. It says that the faithful and true witness and the beginning of the creation of God. There is a link of this verse 14 to the three angels message. See, Laodicean church we believe uh, needs more bit of explanation I think I need some more time with this see how we go that the Old Testament was a church of the prophet and the word of God this is the the core of the church see the Old Testament church has is, is clothed with the Sun I mean the truth the big lights the source the the, the greater lights, as we say. And then this Old Testament church also is clothed with the, with the moon under her feet. These are a lesser lights. So a true church has an identifying mark. One that keep God's word and have the gift of prophecy. The Bible, God's Word, and the gift of prophecy. Keeping God's commandments and have the testimony of Jesus, which is the gift of prophecy. So that's how the Old Testament church was being framed, or was being taken care of God. And when it comes to the New Testament, 
the same principle applied. You have the word of God, which is the Bible, and you have the gifts of prophecy, which is the testimony of Jesus. This Laodicean church is part of the Bible and the gift of prophecy. This Laodicean church is the last church in the book of Revelation prior to the opening of the heavens in the sanctuary. So at the very end of this verse, of these seven churches, at the very end, that's the seven churches, in verse 22, he that had ear let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. And then in chapter 4 in verse 1, and after this, heavens were opened. So this Laodicean church clearly tells us that this is the last church before Jesus In verse 14, it says that the beginning of the creation of God. The Spirit put that word as a link to the three angels' message. See, Laodicean church, this, this message is for God's church. Those who profess to be Jesus followers, those who profess to have God's word and have the gift of prophecy. Whereas the three angels' message is a message to the world. See, Laodicean message is not for the Hindus, it's not for the Islam people. Laodicean church's message is not for the Buddhists. This is not for them. This Laodicean church are for the people that have the God's word and have the gift of prophecy. This is the group of people waiting because the next event is the opening of the heaven. No other religion outside Christianity is waiting for Jesus' coming. Yeah? How many in Christianity preaching about the Jesus' second coming? Do you know? Who's, who's church teaching about Jesus' second coming? No one. Except Seventh-day Adventist church. We have something in common with other religion, but unique to Seventh Day Adventist Church, the preaching of Jesus' second coming. It is linked the word beginning of creation of God, because this Laodicean Church, God wants His people to look back, back into creation. I am the God of creation. Wants us to go back to creation. What happened in creation? There was disobedience, remember? There was a confrontation between the snake, the woman. There was a confrontation between God and the sinner. There was a confrontation between God and the perfect being. Creation is a bag of many events. Much more, when you go back to the book of creation, that that perfect creation, God is sick and tired of negotiating with man. Do you know? God have enough. God was sick and tired. God said, I will not negotiate with man anymore. That's my Filipino language. 
I'm not sure how to read in English. I'm sick and tired. I will not deal. My spirit cannot contend with them anymore. Yeah? God sent the flood. In Noah's time. And in the flood, we are told that Noah been preaching for 120 years. And praise the Lord that for 120 years he managed to save his family. It is a battle. It is a battle to bring your family into the ark. Yeah? We struggle. But praise the Lord. I don't care about the others. I mean, I care, but as long as my family is in the ark, others that don't listen, it's their problem, isn't it? That's my, my own assessment. I might be wrong. But at least for 120 years, his family is safe in the ark. Now, while they were in the ark, God closed the door. Not Noah and not the wicked people. It was God who closes the door. When the door was closed, there was a delay of the rain. Remember? Was a delay? How many days? Seven days delay. In those seven days of delay, door was closed. This is the question that I'd like to leave it to you. Do the wicked know that they were lost? Do no one knew that they were safe? The door was closed. This is the current. We are now in the Laodicean church. The beginning of the creation of God. God wants us to look back. Because the problem we are facing now. The issue that we are facing now. It's not the second coming of Jesus. Not at all. Do not be deceived. What we are facing is the closing of the door. In our modern translation, in the gift of prophecy, we call it the close of probation. That nobody knows. Jesus didn't even know. The hour, I don't know, Jesus said. I don't know about the hour. Only the Father knows. So this Laodicean church is in the very end, just before Jesus coming. And look at the attitude of this Laodicean church. I know thy works, in verse 15. I know the works that thou art neither cold nor hot. This Laodicean church was once Hot or was, was once cold. But becomes lukewarm. Why? One foot in the world and the other foot in heaven. Half hearted attitude of professed followers of Jesus. They are not truly right, but they are not truly fake. They are in between. Because you are lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. What makes this church lukewarm? It says, Verse 17, because you said, I am rich. You say, Seventh day Adventist church is very rich. Yeah? We are sitting in the church today, but how much sanitary products are being sold in the market every day? Do you know? Every morning we feed Australia with breakfast cereals. 
Nobody knows. For the Seventh-day Adventists, we eat sanitarium products, cereals, and we drink the so good, but nobody knows that it is a Seventh-day Adventist church preaching the second coming of Jesus, the proceeds of this money. We are rich. We have hospitals. We have sanitariums. We had prestigious schools and colleges. I'm so proud to tell the world that Avonel College belongs to my church. Aren't you? Very proud. I am very proud and indebted to, Australian, to the Australians that when, when General MacArthur leave Philippines and said, I shall return, he went to Australia and grabbed all the power and energy and supplies and bring back the Philippines and rescue us from the hands of the enemy. And I'm indebted for that. Very grateful. Not only for the war, but also Brother Cardwell, who bring the printed pages to the Philippines to bring the Seventh Adventist Church. It's an Australian literature evangelist. So we owe you two things, by the Australians. We owe you twice. The gospel and the war. Thank you. We are very rich. And increased in goods. We increase in numbers. Our tithe increases. Our offering increases. Membership increases. We, bring, we build up more nursing homes and more facilities and we're making money. We increase in goods. We have a very rich heritage. We had Martin Luther as the father of our faith, our forefathers, you know, by faith, the, the just shall live by faith. We had William Miller. We had all of this. We had Ellen G. White, uh, grade three, uh, very uh, prolific writer, and gives us so profound that even, even his writing still today is being used by thesis of those master's degrees and philosophers. And, and philosophy. We are rich. And it says, and I don't need anything. You see, this church is so proud. This Laodicean church is so proud. Very self-centered. But you know what God said? All right. You are rich. You don't need nothing. Okay. But God said in verse 17, I know one thing about you, Laodicean Church. I know. I know that you are... What's that, what's that word of riches? Like, it's not wrecked. What's that word of rich? Huh? Pitiful. Yeah. In a, in a kind of a... It's a homeless. It's a very... In a very sorry kind of a state. I'm sorry. We are in a... Miser Richard, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. We come to God and say, Lord, I am a faithful tithe payer. I am a, a good Sabbath keeper. I am, I am vegetarian. I fast. I come every Wednesday, prayer meeting in the church. In fact, Lord, I can make heaven my way. Now the same church. Without me, Lord, that Frankston church, ah, nah. without me, that church, big time. Lord, because of me, uh, that baptismal tray won't be finished. Uh, without me, Lord, I think it's a big problem there. This Laodicean church has a self-centered attitude. I am rich. Uh-uh, no, you're poor. I don't need of nothing. Uh -uh, no, you're naked. Now, this is 
the counsel of God for us this morning. In verse 18. I will counsel thee. How could be a poor person by gold? Tell me. I'm very poor. I can't afford to buy gold. This is the counsel. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Lord, how can I buy? Oh, you said you're rich. And now you're poor. You said you're rich before. You said, I don't need of nothing. I can cover myself. But actually, you are blind. Lord, I had that 2020 vision. No, 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 no. You're blind. You can't read without the glasses. You are naked. Friends, this counsel of God is so profound. I would like to deal with you this one word by word one day. The nakedness that Jesus took upon himself so that our nakedness you know, in, in passing I'll just share to you that when Jesus hang on the cross he was naked. The Catholic cross is false. There's nothing that covers him. You read Matthew chapter 25 or 26 and 27. I think Matthew 27. There was nothing that was put on on Jesus when he was hanging on the cross. So that our, our nakedness is covered by his nakedness. His perfect life that is the demands of the law he lived so perfectly and the death that he died that we should have died he died because he loves us but you know what the peers the people that he come down to this planet earth are very loud to see him counsel thee i counsel you i would like to invite you please Buy of me. Buy from me. Gold. Gold tried in the fire. What is that gold tried in the fire? What is that? What is that? What, what are we going to get from? What is that gold that Jesus had? What is that gold that Jesus had that is tried in the fire? Can you, can you tell me? Can you have someone to share? What is that gold? God's love. Yeah, what else? What is that gold that tried in the fire? You know that when we are, when we are go through temptations, when we are tired by fire, we turn out like gold. How is it gold being purified? See, it's by fire, wasn't it? From carrots to become higher degree and becoming more fine and refined, but it should be constantly on fire. Is fire temptation? It's a bit hard to, to believe because God is a constant fire. God lives in fire. He is the fire. His throne is on fire. Jesus counseled us this morning. Come, come to me. Buy me that <coughs> to understand <coughs> of this gold is let's get back to the sanctuary. By looking back the sanctuary in which in the New Testament it becomes the three angels' message. We have the Ten Commandments and the fourth is the Sabbath. We have the sanctuary, and then we have the gift of prophecy. 
that was the very core, the three precious doctrine of the the pioneers when they registered Seventh Adventist Church in 1861 or 63. Was it Brian? 61, 1861, around right about that year, either 1861 or 1863. We have three core message, core doctrinal belief, the sanctuary, the Ten Commandments and the Sabbath, and the gift of prophecy. We have Hiram, we have Hiram Ibsen, Joseph Bates, and James and Ellen White. Look back to the sanctuary. Why is gold is being laid? In every furniture in the sanctuary, it is the wood that overlaid with gold. It is Jesus, humanity, and divinity intermingling together. So get me my divinity. Get me my divine being. Get me the divinity. How to get that God's divinity? How to get that God's divine to become part of our being? There, there, are, many, there are many situations in the Bible. The me connection. With the vine attached to the vine. By drinking the cup in the foot washing, that means we are partaking him, taking him. His being becomes our being. Our being becomes his being. There was this intimacy. Buy of me gold. We get his humanity, his divinity intertwining. I counsel thee to buy of me that gold. I have lived a perfect life for you. Jesus said, I have lived a perfect life. In humanity, I live perfectly. I fulfill the law perfectly for you. In my divinity, by of me. See, by faith, we must come to Jesus. Do you know him? That's a question asks. Do you know him? Do you know Jesus? The book of Daniel and the book of Revelation, we are very sure that the Jesus we believe today is the real Jesus outside those books. Maybe we can question the existence of Jesus. But those books of the Bible tells us that exactly on time he was born. Exactly on time he died. Exactly on time he rose from the grave. Exactly on time he went up to the heavenly sanctuary in the holy place. And exactly on time he moved into the most holy place. And then God said, Laodicean church, this is your attitude just before I will close the door of mercy. I will make you rich. I will make you clothes. I will cover you with my white raiments. I will cover your nakedness. I will anoint your eye with eye salve so that you will see but come come to me buy of me pure gold how often do we read our bible how often do we kneel in prayer how often do we realize that I am poor, I am blind, I am naked, I am wretched, and I am in need. When did you realize, or when did I realize that I am poor? You see, 
we are. Laodicean Church, God's intention is that we become a church. A church that becomes a group, a group of believers. A priesthood of believers. Uh, a royal, what does it say with Peter? That is Second Peter chapter 2, chapter 3. A chosen nation. Being called from darkness into his marvelous light. But what happens to the seven of this church? We are half-hearted. One foot in the world and one foot in God's word. I can guarantee you one thing. God will spew us out of his mouth. And there's one big problem that this church is facing. Let's go in verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he will be. You know what's the problem of the Laodicean church? Where is Christ? Where is Jesus? Outside the hearts of a Seventh-day Adventist. Do not think that you are rich. Do not think that you are in need of nothing. Because Jesus is knocking at our doors. Now, if Jesus is outside our heart, who is inside the heart? Oh, no, no, no not Satan. No, we're not demon possessed. We're, we're, we are very good saved Adventists. We pay our tithe. We come to church. We keep the Sabbath. We, we're vegetarian. What's inside the heart? Self. You're right. Self. If Jesus is not in the heart itself, you see, I have told, I, I shared before, I am a very stubborn man too. Um, Vicky keeps telling me to go and see a doctor. Uh, you know what my reply? And the doctor is not well today, the doctor is sick. The problem with the Laodicean church is they think that they are not sick. It's very hard to, to cure a person that the person will not realize that they are sick, isn't it? No matter how much antibiotic you are preparing, if the person said, ah, no, I'm not sick, I'm okay. What does it good that medication you have? You cook a very nice food, and then the guy, and then he comes, come on, honey, you're hungry, come listen. No, I'm not hungry. This is the problem with Laodicean church. So proud, so self-centered, do not accept that they make a mistake. I tell you one thing. It's very tough, very tough to accept that I make a mistake. Yeah? Very hard. And oftentimes we say, I forgive you, but I cannot forget. Please don't do it again. This is the problem with Laodicea Church. That self-centered attitude is the I. It's the I sits in the heart the humbleness of a Christian that's what Jesus longed for I knock at the door and if anyone will open the door I will come in to him 
and will sup with him. When is the supper time? In the morning? Do you have supper in the morning? When is the supper time? Probably about what time? Probably about when the sun is set. Is that where the supper time? <coughs> General, generally. <coughs> so this Laodicean church, this church is right at the very end of time. It's supper time. And then Jesus said, work because the night is coming when no one can work. What did the ten virgins do in the night time? What did the ten virgins do in the night time? They're sleeping. It's normal to sleep in the night time. Come on, don't be awake in the night. It's not good for you. They both sleep. I will sup with him. If you open the door, I will sup with him. Just before the dark. And when the dark night come, where no one can work, we fell asleep. And then what you hear the next one? The loud cry. Wake up! The groom. But it's too light, wasn't it? Was it too light? It was too light. When did the people knew that they were lost when Noah's ark, the door was closed? <coughs> when the heavens start dropping. Not even. I can guarantee you, not even. I think they start probably doing like this. Yeah? Did they knew that they were lost? Maybe not yet. But when they start, do you think they were lost? When the water was up here, do you think they were lost? I reckon. I think they start. Noah, open the door. What happened? We are sitting in Frankston Church today, not by accident. <clears throat> we have to prepare, not for the breaking of the day, when the Easts will break with the lightning, flashing to the West. And then you will say, I hope I can behold him. Don't wait for that. I counsel thee, verse 20. I counsel thee, if any man hear my voice, you hear now. Now you've heard. Jesus saves. Open the door. I will come into him and I will sup with him. Buy me pure gold. It's free. I know you're poor. I know that you're helpless. I know that you are not rich. I know that you are naked. Come to me. Let me in. Let me take the possession in your hearts so that when the heavens will open, you can sit with me in my Father's throne, the same as the Father has opened for me. There is a place God has prepared for us. To him, in verse 21, to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I also overcome. Overcoming is not our way. Overcoming is his way. I tell you one thing. You cannot beat Satan. 
No way. No way. He managed to deceive three quarters of angels in heaven. And who are you? And who am I? It's a piece of cake to him. Come to Jesus. Open our hearts. Let him in all our shortcomings, all our filthiness, all our diseases, all that stinks, all those attitudes that stinks, all of that behavior, all that, bring it to Jesus. He will refine and will make us, will make you, and will make me pure gold. Would you let him come in? Would you like to serve him? We are living on the last day from 1844. This Laodicean church has been told and retold. Jesus now is in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary investigating your case and my case every single deed done in open and in closeness Jesus is recording and he is doing the investigation once investigation is done God Je Jesus will possess the kingdom he will decide who is in my kingdom Jesus will make a decision for you and for me to be into his kingdom. And when that kingdom is finished and complete, he will declare in heaven, it is finished. The righteous will be righteous still. The wicked will be wicked still. Then he will come and bring a reward. Thank you for your word this morning. It reminds us each moment of our life that there is, there is heaven waiting for us this world is not our home this world is so much injustice is so much people doesn't really care people with so much fake behaviors Because Satan is working so hard to destroy as many as he can. But you have won the victory. That's why we've sang the song. There is joy by and by. When all of the workers will gather home in that new Jerusalem. Together with you. To decide together with you the destiny of Satan, the demons, and those who are unbelievers. What a day that will be. So, Father, we stand before your presence. Help us to open the doors of our hearts. Help us to unload the selfishness within our hearts. Cleanse us, possess us, take us, lead us and deliver us from any evil. And take us home. And thank you for the many answered prayers. This we ask in Jesus' name.